Hello, apa kabar semuanya? My name is Vincent, and I would like to talk to you about lesson three, basic Python for data analytics. And here we want to get our hands dirty, and we are going to talk about stocks prediction. But before we move on to the crux of our tutorial, I would like to mention some corrections and changes from the past few lessons. So first of all is the commitment. So I remember at that time I. Uh, I mentioned to you that I would post upload videos at least once in a week, but I realized at that time that I didn't have have the time because because uh, uh, there was final events and after that I went to Italy straight away. But currently is that I'm in a new term right now. I'm taking an analytics uh, last final year project. And I'm hoping that I could upload at least two video, uh, one video or two videos within two weeks. So that's my commitment as of now. So, but to make up for the previous lessons that we have lost, I created this lesson, and I created some. I will upload more videos today. So hopefully you can catch up for it, and it makes up for the all lost time we had. All right. And second is for target audience. So I did have the privilege to discuss to my friends and professors about this lesson, and they suggested to me that I should have a very specific target audience. And I said that I would like to have uh, business practitioners that would like to learn analytics for, for my target market. Because for the fact that there is a lot of demands here, as you see from my school, my school is a management university, and most of the students here they want to learn analytics, so I hope this could facilitate you and them as well. But for those of you that is not business practitioners, don't worry about it. You will still find benefits along the way because I will still apply patterns in many different kind of problems and algorithms and so on. All right. Then technology use. So last time I I told you guys that for this sake of presentation we are going to use just pattern and common form. But however, I realized that it might not be suitable for business practitioners. Therefore, I changed it to iPython notebook and a conduct, which I'm going to explain to you maybe after this video. All right. So it won't take much. But let us go through about what you are going to learn in this uh, sector. So we are going to talk about Python and data analytics. All right. So in Python and data analytics, we are going to talk about all different types of business departments, finance and accounting, marketing, operations, and HR. For now, for these two weeks, we are going to talk about stock prediction for you to understand what pattern can help in predicting stock. And second is the HR, so predicting employee retentions. Alright? Okay, so for the stock prediction, this is sort of the outline that we have devised. So first of all is to use pandas to upload the latest data, so data collections that is very updated from Yahoo Finance. And second, we want to explore and understand the data sets. And also to predict the return of the stock in the next year. So we're going to talk about three different models in order to try and predict the stocks and see how it goes, alright? Then we will, we will compare the models and discuss the improvements. And finally, we will go to on the challenges. Alright. And this is the outline for the technology. We're going to spend us and map properly. I'm going to talk to you about it further in, in the demonstration that we'll do. Right? So this is a demonstration. So I created a PyPattern notebook that could demonstrate the power of Python in predicting stocks uh, and the analysis that's required. So for you to take a look around, you can actually just click this link. So this link will bring you down to, uh, to the GitHub that uh, for me to host my tutorials, um, code, and wait for a while, and it will give you this. Alright, so I just scroll through very quickly to wait for you to open it up also. Feel free to pause the, poly, the video if, uh, if you have any trouble, and maybe you can comment it out if somehow you get stuck. Alright. Okay, so for this lesson, uh, first of all, we are going. Uh, I'm going to introduce you about pandas. So pandas is a data frame uh, framework 
So it stores data in a very highly efficient spreadsheet format and function. So what it does is it has a very highly optimized data structures. And it's also very intuitive because it resembles those that you use in Excel. So you have flows and you have columns, but it's more optimized because you don't display it all the time, for example. And therefore, it can contain more than millions of data, 10 millions of data, even hundreds of millions of data in a very um, nice and fast way to process it out. All right. Then afterwards, it computes. Its computing time is quite efficient compared if you do it on your own, but uh, without using this library because it talks to C++ also, which is a very well streamlined computing environment. And finally, there's a lot of support to it. A lot of people just keep changing the algorithms, improving it, and therefore, like, you can be sure that there are a lot of supports out there if you get stuck, and definitely, you can find a very optimized uh, way to do this there. Right? Then, um, then, first of all, let's talk about loading the Yahoo Finance datasets, okay? So what Pandas give you is that there is web reader, Pandas web data reader. So this is an extension in Panda libraries that allows you to access all these resources. So it's not only stocks, but also maybe HPI, maybe Big Mac index. You can find it all from all of these data sets. And the videos and tutorials you can find here. So there's a web reader here. And let me open it for a while. And there you go. So if you want to open for Farmer or French, which is sort of like commodity market and funds market, then you can actually see that this is the code that is necessary. So just do importing and then you do a different data reader and then you can find the industry portfolios data sets. Alright? And you can just print it out to analysis with it. So it's a very simple and powerful way to collect data using pandas. And you don't need to do anything to communicate with this um, interface. So what you need to do is just importing these pandas. So importing just meaning, hey Python, please open these pandas and then use the code that they have prepared for me. Alright? And afterwards, you just uh, pull the data from Apple and Yahoo and you get a very Excel sheet. Like, so it's very intuitive. You have date as a as a row so if you know excel there's one two three four five and so on until one hundred thousand whatever and you have columns so data frame is just the table series is actually the columns so open column high series low series close series those are series okay then we talk about um, how to explore this so for this sake of the tutorial i will talk about rolling mean and return deviations so this is how you can generate all means. So the window is 100, right? Then I created this graph. So as you can see, it's very, very uh, nice looking chart. And basically, you can see here that those that are above the trend line, the rolling mean is meaning that the trend is increasing and those below the trend is going down. And afterwards, we talk about the return. So you can do a percentage change with it. And it will give you a very nice looking index also. So this just talks about the kind of risk if you want to invest in these stocks. Right? Then afterwards, one more important thing that many people do not do and cannot do just by comparing with a very hard to do just by comparing it with uh, like Yahoo Finance and Open one by one is doing competitor analysis. So it's very simple, just get the data by using web data reader. Apple, GE, Google, IBM, Microsoft, those are very close competitors. And afterwards, we change it in a way that it gives a percentage change for each different company in a very nice looking matrix. Right? Then we can do schedule plot and see how the returns of G and A here. Alright? We can do it together with all the uh, companies. And if you see here, I have a KDE. So KDE is a kernel distribution estimation. So what it does is it gives a very nicely looking normal distributions to give you like whether it's like highly skewed, either skewed in the right or left. So what it means is that for Apple you can see that most of the returns are positive returns compared to GE or Google. So maybe it's good for you to invest in Apple. Or maybe even better is IBM because it's very uh, very leaning to the right, alright? Very leaning to the positive side. Well, not the dark side. <laughs> 
And afterwards, you have the correlation. So the heat map tells you like the IBM is very correlated to GB. And if you see the graph here, it's 0.5. So it's very nice correlation. Maybe you can predict uh, GE stock price by looking at the IBM performance. Right? Then afterwards, you can chart this out in a very nice looking risk and expected returns. And you can kind of see, uh, based on the risk and expected returns, I would like to IBM to be uh, my, you know, my company that I would like to invest in. And it's very simple, you can just change like add on companies just by changing the data sets and you get everything by running all this all over again. Doesn't take you minutes. So it's very cool. And afterwards, we are going to predict the stock prices by using these three uh, models and these four uh, predictors, these four things. And we want to predict the adjective flows, so it will be as a label. So I'm going to show you how it works step by step. It's actually very simple. To build the model, you actually only need this and the importing to build one model. And that's it. You can actually test this out. You can see that, oh, the linear regression confidence is actually quite high. It's 0 0.96. But it doesn't talk about the accuracy because it just says that it's linear. Alright? But the most important stuff is that when you try to focus it and then you plot it, you can get a very nice looking chart of the predictions of the next few periods. So the blue line here talks about the forecasting and the next time you can see, oh, you might be having the trend line that's going up. So maybe I would like to invest in it or not invest in it. So you can do this with many kind of different companies just by changing one word and up there when you are importing data and just rerun the code all over again to see different charts. And this would be a new way for you to a big stock market for you that do not know how to use Python, right? Then of course, there's the improvement to be done. It's still not that uh, good yet. So maybe we can see, we can do sentimental analysis. We can try to see what Donald Trump's do with Apple, for example, and what people comment about it. Is it a bad thing? Is it a good thing? And then we can use that sentimental analysis in order to predict or maybe make uh, general predictions whether we should or should not invest in some company. Alright, so that's it about my tutorial. So the next lesson, I'm going to talk about lesson 4, basic pattern for data analytics. But for the step-by-step -step tutorial of how you can do it, feel free just to check on my GitHub or maybe click on this playlist above. Alright, and then I will give a step-by-step -step tutorial on how you do things. And you can just follow along the way, code alongside with me, and we learn together. That's good, that's it. Feel free to comment it out and give me your reviews, your feedbacks, how we can improve, and I'll see you next time. Alright? Bye bye. Sampai jumpa.